And welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time for Off the Press, where we have a quick review on some of the major news stories making headlines across the country. Um, and of course, I have our in-house guest to also share his thoughts on some of these stories uh, as much as possible. We'd like to say good morning to Mr. Chris Wandu. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pretty interesting um, uh, morning. Uh, there's so much that has gone on in the last uh, 24 right. hours. Exactly. Um, of course, coming from uh, Rotimi Amechi to uh, Dwoye Diri in Bielsa State. So I'm hoping that some of these things will come up and we can quickly uh, run through them. I hope so too. All right. I'm going to be starting with stories on the Tribune newspapers this morning. Let's see what we can quickly find over here. El Rufai and Khan meet, and that's with regards to Southern Kaduna. Also, COVID-19 test, a must as international flights resume on the 29th of August. Nigeria's comatose refineries gulp 10 billion naira in one year. Uh, probably need to repeat that. Nigeria's comatose refineries uh, gulp 10 billion naira in one year. Governors back judicial autonomy. That's also on the Tribune this morning. Um, scrapping amnesty program may force Niger Delta use back to trenches, says Clark. But Abia Miller pushes for African countries' debt cancellation, also on the Tribune, and also cowards using Progressive Governors Forum DG against me, says Adam Sushumole. Um, a few other stories we can find on the Tribune this morning. Taraba Kaelin's Steve back out of uh, Commission of Inquiry, and also how he bad on suspected serial killer escaped. Um, stop for political favoritism in 774,000 job allocation, PDP tells the federal government. And uh, reps and Amechi differ on $33 billion rail project loan. One other story I'm going to quickly take this morning. Tribunal nullifies BIOS a governorship election, orders fresh election. And of course, uh, Governor Dwoye Diri uh, has uh, spoken about his uh, uh, plans to appeal that judgment. Chris Wandu, let's dive in. Yes, um, of course, we have to start with the headline, the major headline uh, in the Tribune, which has to do with uh, Aerofly meeting with the um, uh, officials of uh, Khan over the Southern Kaduna um, uh, killing. Yeah. And that's been going on for weeks now. And good enough, um, the various um, gladiators are meeting. Um, but what's on to me is also the statement of um, coming from some of the leaders of um, Southern Kaduna. Uh, Later has been that of a uh, former River State Military Governor, General Lequot, where he was blaming the statement created to the um, one of the commanders of the military, uh, Major General Emeka Okunko, uh, who was saying that um, the attack comes from both ends. And, and the general was saying the truth. Uh, whether they like it or not, um, it's, just, it's not only the Sada Cardinals that, um, that being, also the, uh, the Fulani is also being attacked. So there is always attack and reprisal attack. That is what is going on. And I just hope that um, those, the meeting that is going on uh, with the, all the stakeholders will be able to put an end to that uh, issue. That has, the, the, the problem with Sada Cardinals has lingered for close to 30, over 30 years now. Um, so it's not just a new issue, and I, 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 I believe by now that would have sorted, but the comments coming from some of the leaders and also some of the activities of some of the indigenous and yeah. also as I said, is not helping matters. So it is, it is both political and religious in nature, and I think we should be able to need that in, in the board. We're good enough, the Nigeria Air Force a few days ago had um, stated that they are reinforcing their uh, presence in the Sada Kadnanda, we hope that we'll be able to solve some of this problem. So, um, it, it, there is no way that we will not have to look for peace. Yeah. Um, and we, both parties must also learn how to coexist within the community. There is no, there is no way you can do that. Um, so, that is my take on that um, for Sada Kadnanda. Then, looking at all, all the other stories, uh, we'll discuss um, the issue of um, the governor. Um, by a governor that was yeah. um, uh, uh, yes, that uh, election was nullified yesterday is um, is a big problem for me because we know what it takes to conduct an election in Nigeria and um, if INEC is going to conduct that election it's also going to um, cost a lot if you know um, money that is not even available that can be used for other things um, but uh, good enough the government says is going on appeal which is his right um, but um, the issue of the uh, of um, that issue will be squarely on the table of INEC 
because if for any reason for I need to have omitted the logo or whatever of the political party in question, then that's a problem. But INEC also came up with uh, a, a statement that the deputy governor of the candidate um, uh, was not qualified to contest. That I, I think the uh, cutoff age is supposed to be 35, and he was 34. But um, the parties said that um, they also that they were able to bring in another person before the time frame allowed. So uh, let's see this, how this point, I'm sure this will get up to the Supreme Court and they yeah. might eventually uh, the Supreme Court will decide on, on that issue. Um, There's also a story on uh, Nigerian uh, refineries gulping 10 billion naira. It says Nigeria's comatose refineries gulped 10 billion in, in one year. It's, it's rather unfortunate. Um, it's, it also shows us in, um, how uh, the, the, the level of corruption within that sector. Um, how many barriers of, uh, uh, how many liters of petrol do these uh, refiners refine on a daily basis? The one in Portacol, the one in uh, Wari, the one in Kaduna. How many? Because close to 95% or even 99% of the petroleum used in the country are imported. So I don't see any reason why we should still keep uh, pumping money into those uh, refineries um, that are not using anything. I, I don't know why the, whether it's NMPC or whichever organization is, is in charge. Those refineries should be closed down totally. And I know that some licenses were issued some years back for modular uh, ref yeah, refineries to come. I don't know why we don't have in that. So uh, most of those, practically all of those uh, refineries that at least they are using, some of them are over 40 years, some are over 50 years. And the, um, every, on a yearly basis, we continue prompting money for uh, turn around. That's always the word we use, turn around maintenance. Yes. And nothing has been turn around. Uh, 10 billion for doing what? Um, I think that it should be it should be looked into. Um, both the EFCC and ICP should be able to look into that All area. Right. Right, Let's move me. over to the uh, Nation newspapers now, see what we can also quickly find over there. Um, it says uh, Amechi and Reps in face off over thirty three billion naira uh, billion dollars. I beg your pardon, Chinese loan. Uh, minister and lawmakers scrutiny can stall Lagos. Uh, the minister rather says lawmakers scrutiny can stall Lagos Calabar coastal rail line. Also, governor's convoy attacked with a pistol. Uh, Fifteen arrested. Um, also on the uh, nation this morning, Oshomole DG PGF being used by cowards. Oh, and um, by also Governor Diri appeals sack. NBS inflation. Now 12.82%. Strict rules as international flights resume August 29th. And also Wada Meida dies at 70. Um, on the Edo State and Ondo 2020 elections, Buhari warns against violence. Obaseki importing thugs. INEC presents voters registration to 40, uh, par 14 parties. And um, Unity Forum dissolves into a Kiridolu's campaign team. These are some of the lead stories on the nation this morning. Banks ration forex as dollar scarcity bites harder. Um, I think those are the major ones on the, on the nation this morning. Uh, we yes, uh, we look at the Amici House of Reps. Uh, first off, I, I watched the clip last night <laughs> uh, where the minister, honorable minister, was having exchanges with the chairman of the committee. Uh, but my worry is that. To me, it just seems that government officials are just so much in a hurry to pick up these loans without necessarily look at the, the various clauses. Yeah. We are so much interested. Let's get the loan. Let's get the loan. Let's do what we need to do. It's not just getting the loan. If we're going to get loans that is going to uh, put us on our knees and which our children born and yet unborn are going to be suffering to pay in the years to come, then there's no need for it. Um, I also saw instances where the committee also said that our, uh, our official government officials just signed blank papers and uh, <laughs> contract blank papers and some were even saying that, um, that the contract were in Chinese language and the rest of them. I think this is high time that we get uh, notable lawyers, constitutional lawyers, and those that are, are very prolific in um, drafting of contracts to come in. But I, 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 my worry is that I don't think Nigeria can sign any contract without the input of the AGF, of the office of the AGF. So the AGF is the senior advocate of Nigeria, and it has various officers um, um, in the ministry that that's supposed to pass through before um, is, uh, we sign. So we are also involved. Um, 
um, in as much as we want to develop our infrastructures, but that will not be at the detriment of signing away our lives just because we need these loans. And I think that is what um, the House of Reps is, is taking. I don't think we also need to get into personality yeah. issues just we had with the NDDC and the rest of it. It's not a personal thing for me. It's about Nigeria and Nigerians. So in as much as the government is taking the loan, the loan is being taken on behalf of you and I. Uh, my money is there. Yours is there. As far as Nigeria is going to pay back the loan. So um, I, would, I would say the minister should tarry a while. I had him shouting and saying that, oh, this, uh, the, so, so the Lagos um, uh, Calabar rail will be, contract will be uh, discarded, will be distorted and the rest of them. Fine. Um, but let us look at the books. Most often than not, um, I know that, you know, the terrible lines in contract are always coming. Very, very tiny letters. Very, very tiny. Not the bold ones. Yeah. The bold ones are the ones you can, but those tiny ones that you just overlook, it's just like you buying something and you're giving certain clauses and they just value, you can just say, they say sign, you sign, or click, I, I agree. When it happens and you come to see the problem that involved, you'll be shocked. So I think that should be, uh, the contract should be properly, $33 billion, boy, bro, no be more money, you know, be more money. So that is it for me. I think we should be able to look at this contract properly. Yes, we need this loan for development of a certain basic yeah. infrastructure, but not at the detriment of our sovereignty and also Nigerian integrity. It has happened in certain countries. There's a country, I think Zambia, one of these uh, West, Af West, West African countries. We had a sign um, to pick up a loan from China. And at the end of it, they couldn't put, their airport, international airport has been taken over by Chinese. I think the arrest system and so many other national assets have been taken over by Chinese. It is, it is it's happening now. I think it's Zambia, one of these. I don't know which of the West African countries, but it is happening. Are we going to go stem that route or again? I don't think we should do that. So, but in the course of also, my problem is also, let us all make sure that the loans we are taking, we are using it for the right things. Okay, not just money that we pick up and we people in Bezul at the end yeah. of it or those infrastructure that we're supposed to pick it up for uh, are not being used. Yeah. Um, then we, we can also look at um, the issue of uh, Edo. Uh, we are, former chairman of APC is accusing the spokesman of the DG of the uh, um, progressive, progressive Congress of, Congress of, of yeah. um, being used. Well, in politics, anything can happen in politics. So <laughs> whether it's being used or not being used, the fact is that it is APC's governor's forum. Or is it, is it talking about Nigeria Governors Forum? So, um, Adam Shumole has been there. He was the two-time governor of Edo State. He knows the working of, um, of this forum. So if he has any complaint, I think he knows the right uh, place to place those um, complaints so that it can be resolved. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, it is still the heart of Edo State that is on, on, on play. It is um, the governorship election that's coming up September 19th. Yeah. And it's a two way, it's a one way traffic between the governor, uh, the candidate of the PDP, and APC. And we know where Adam Sashomile stands in this. So, expectedly, uh, I expect him to with And he was also with the president, president yesterday. Yeah. Yes, he visited the president yesterday, and, and I heard what he said. So, but um, I am just appealing that the, the gladiators in this election should just temper their. Or chances. All right. the, the way they are playing this is not just good enough. All right, let's move to the Guardian newspapers and see what we can also quickly find here. It says here that fatigue slows down COVID-19 fight. Um, also on the Guardian, surprise and outrage as tribunal nullifies Diri's apex court victory. Don't panic. We will get justice, Diri tells his supporters. Um, 36 governors for judicial autonomy, says fire me. And also on the Guardian newspapers, Minister tells Nigerians to adopt treatment protocol. That's with regards COVID-19. Africa marks six months of uh, first COVID-19 case. Um, uh, what else can we find also on the Guardian this morning? Uh, mixed uh, tales as uh, the, of course, WASI kicks off nationwide the examinations for secondary school students. This is, um, you know, a couple of the stories that we have on The Guardian this morning, not very many of them. Yeah. But of course, uh, let's talk quickly, maybe start with fatigue. 
as uh, Nigeria's COVID-19 uh, fight slows down. Yeah, Nigerians are tired, <laughs> seems to be tired of coronavirus or COVID-19. They feel that it's time for them to move on with their lives and the rest of them. And the government is doing all within its power to also make sure that um, the economy is reopened. Um, the international flight will commence uh, on the 29th of August, uh, which goes to show that we are really ready. But even at that, people are still dying from COVID-19. But the problem here is that uh, most Nigerians still don't believe there is a COVID-19. And um, most of the protocols um, um, uh, by um, NCD, um, NCDC, uh, Nigerians are not observing it. Yeah. You don't see people using mark, face masks again and the rest of them. So it is now a free fall for everybody. And what this government is doing practically is just putting it back, uh, pushing it back to, uh, the, to Nigerians to take your life um, and be able to safeguard that. So um, I'm not surprised, even across the globe, uh, most countries have um, practically <laughs> opening up and finding work, but I still believe that part of the solution to this is that we should look for homegrown solutions to some of these issues, especially in the area of uh, vaccine, trying to look for vaccine, locally made vaccine if we can, so that uh, we don't need to rely on any international or, or any foreign country for assistance. Even after um, post COVID-19, we also have other pandemics. Others will still come. Yeah. But how ready are we? Are we going to go to bed immediately? We are through with this, just as we, we did with Ebola. Um, that is not the way to go. But I believe that um, Nigeria should be most cautious. People have been dying recently. You've seen high profile people still dying from COVID-19. Um, but we can still do more. I don't know whether we are testing more. I don't know whether we are testing more as much as we are. We should do because that is where the problem is. If in a country of about 20, uh, 200 million people, and we just still have that little fraction of those tested, uh, I, I don't think we've we've done enough. So, okay. but good enough. The U.S. has given us some ventilators about 200 recently, and the president has also approved about 8.9 billion um, naira um, to get more kits. Let's see how that goes. Okay. All right, we're going to move to the uh, punch news of us this morning. We have a couple of stories here that we can also quickly share um, with you. Of course, uh, some of them we've already spoken about. Um, but hey, experts finger petrol price hike as, and others as inflation hits 12.82%. Scarcity disrupts banks, IOCs, telcos, uh, forex payments. And also, Dirito appeal tribunal as uh, appeal rather as tribunal sacks Biosa governor orders fresh poll. Um, what else can we find? If I respond to PGFDG, it's like fighting a pig, says Adam Sushumole. <laughs> and um, also, Nigerian traders shops federal government considers retaliatory actions against Ghana. I believe we should bring that up. It's a uh, um, it's a pretty a huge you know event that is currently mm. ongoing. Mm. On Chinese loan terms are dangerous says reps as federal government confirms sovereignty clause. Nigerian government officials signed empty pages of loan agreement. It also says $326 million loan on rice farming yet to be disbursed four years after signing. Rotimi Amici defends contentious clause. A DMO provides three out of 14 documents. Um, also, 2.2 million voters, voters speak Edo governor on September 19th. And how headsmen killed my fiance and kidnapped me, says an oh, your female farmer. Um, these are the ones that we have uh, a time for. So let's quickly see what we can rush through um, on the punch. Yes, um, let's look at the uh, problem Nigerians are, traders are facing in Ghana. Uh, it's becoming too much um, an issue. I remember last year, um, the same problem, they faced the same problem that their shops were closed. Um, then, then it was said that it was the trade union um, in Ghana that... Um, embarked on that. But now it's the government of Ghana that is doing it. And I, I always wonder why it has to be a, a, a Nigerians. Um, <laughs> I, I know that uh, <laughs> there used to be a player in the premiership then, but uh, Balotelli, who you always ask, why me? So why, <laughs> why is it always Nigerian? Uh, it's not only in Ghana. Yeah. We saw what happened in South Africa. South Africa, they take up Nigerians. If you go to other parts of the, uh, Africa, I don't know why Nigerians have always been um, taking retaliatory action. I don't know how. Personally, I cannot identify any Ghanaian in Nigeria. Sincerely, if I see a Ghanaian on the streets of Nigeria, I don't know. I don't even know those of them that have shops or what. I think the problem is more of our government. It is the way we present ourselves. It is the way we present our uh, people. Because 
um, in my language, they say, is the name that you give your child that people will call the person. So if countries, smaller countries like Ghana, like Togo, even Benin and Togo here, the way they treat, uh, treat Nigeria. So I think we must, there must be drastic action that we must take to prove to these people that, yes, we are not just big brother for the, the sense of bet. We can also buy. A situation where we, the, every single time Nigerians would be, I was listening to the president of the, the Nigerian traders in Ghana uh, yesterday speaking on one of the radio stations. I was saying what all the things that have been, they pay their taxes, they, everything that they've been asked to do. But the fact is that most Ghanaians still believe that Nigerians are depriving them. Yeah. You understand? That is where the problem is. These are guys that have left their country, are working so hard, and they are also um, building your economy. So why every time, that, why do, have, do they have to wait? They close them down, sometimes they burn them, their uh, business. I think the federal government should come out with a decisive statement. The Federal Ministry of, uh, of Foreign Affairs should be decisive now and for uh, now. Right. And make sure people will be able to put this um, to bed once and for all so that we don't continue to have this kind of uh, issues creeping up every now and then all right. with, with our neighbors. That's all we have uh, time for. Thank you very much, Chris Wandu, for stepping in and for sharing your views on these stories, making headlines across the country. Thank you very much for having me.